As you can see, it's still quite a mess here, uh, but cleanup is underway, and uh, it should be done by the end of this week. But um, that's not what the point of today's video was, or is. Um, I recently got a request to demonstrate all of my computers and to talk about them, and power them all up and demonstrate them working. Well, unfortunately, I can't really demonstrate all of them working, uh, because some of them are in varying states of disrepair, but I can certainly show you all of them and power up as many of the ones that uh, I can. So let's start over here. This is my Toshiba Tekra 8000. It is right now covered with dust, but that's okay. Pentium 2 366. Uh, what else? I think it's got two, yeah, it's 256 megabytes of memory a 10 gigabyte hard drive that I should probably replace but I haven't yet because I don't care enough I don't really have any replacements anyway and it's running Linux so let's power it up shall we definitely does take a long time to boot I'm not really going to show the entire boot process but you get the idea, it's running anti-X Linux, or anti-X Linux, if you prefer to call it that. Um, anyway, the machine beside it is my music PC. It is a Dell, what is this, Dell Latitude CPX J750 GT. You can hear just how much of a bad shape that drive is in, but anyway. 750 megahertz uh, Intel Pentium 3 processor. This one has also got 256 megabytes of memory installed in it. And, um, who asked you? And a 12 gig IBM hard drive, and it's running Windows 2000, as well as the mixed DJing program. This machine is terribly underpowered for this task. I'm looking to replacing it with something else soon. Again, nobody asked you for your input. And, uh, oh yeah, it's got a DVD drive in it too, that one's only got a CD-ROM. Like I said, I'm looking to replacing it soon, but it still works just fine for the purpose. This thing runs 24-7. Mainly because it's got a network, a uh, drive that is on the network, and whenever I restart it, it loses that drive, and I have to unplug it, plug it back in, and reset up all the sharing for it. But anyway, so there we have that. The machine up here is my Acer Aspire 1 532H2807 uh, netbook that I used to use as a music machine, but again, it's also terribly underpowered for the job. Um, it's got a an Intel Atom N450 processor clocked at, I think, 1.86 or 2.86 gigahertz. I can't remember. I think it's 1.86. 2.86 sounds a little bit fast. But uh, that's what it's got in it. It has two gigabytes of memory, a 160 gigabyte Hitachi hard drive, and it is running Windows Vista or Windows 7 Starter. So power that one up as well. And uh, oh, there you go. You get to see the boot up process of this one. I have it up here, but I've got a keyboard hooked up to it, as well as a mouse. I'm going to come back to this machine in a second. So 
So here's the boot process of that one. This is my main computer. It is a ThinkPad T410. Uh, Core i5-520M processor. I've talked about it before. In fact, one of my recent videos. Uh, it's now got 8 gigabytes of RAM in it. And uh, a plethora of hard drives, which I'm not even going to get into. Oh, you know what? What the hell? Let's talk about the drives. I have a an ADATA SX900 128GB SSD, which I use to boot the system and store all of the programs. I have a 750GB Western Digital Caviar Black drive that is being used as the storage drive for all of my documents that I have stored on the computer that I would normally have stored on the boot drive. But considering it's an SSD, I don't have them stored there. Uh, I should talk about this. This is a 2 terabyte Seagate ST2000DM001. The only Seagate drive, well, maybe not quite. The only Seagate drive, well, there's. I've talked about this machine a couple of different times. Uh, actually, in my most recent. one of my most recent videos. This is a ThinkPad T410. Not the highest end thing you can get, but certainly not the lowest end either. It's got an Intel Core i5-520M processor, clocked at 2.4 GHz. Um, in my most recent video, it had 6 GB of memory, but it's now got 8 gigs, and a world of hard drives. Uh, I'm not even going to... Eh, you know what? What the hell? Let's talk about the hard drives. It has an ADATA SX900 128GB SSD, which I use to boot the system and store all the programs. A terribly underutilized at the moment 750 gigabyte Caviar Black Drive stores all of my files. An ST2000DM001 with this really nice Vantech Nexstar CX enclosure hooked up via eSATA stores all of my YouTube videos that I've uploaded. Uh, well, my YouTube videos. Back here in that enclosure, that Seagate enclosure over there, I have a Toshiba MK30, MK3276GSX, I think is what that is. It's a 320 gigabyte drive storing a whole bunch of other random junk um, that I'm looking to moving over into one of the Sieg, or Saig, I'm not, still not sure how you pronounce that. These enclosures, one of them has got Actually, both of them have got 320 gigabyte Seagates. One of them is a 7200 RPM, and the other one's a 5400. The 5400 RPM drive is coming out because there's nothing on it. I was using it to store backups, but I moved those backups to another drive. And the other one is being used to store all of my downloaded YouTube videos. The only reason why I'm downloading YouTube videos instead of watching them directly on YouTube like I would normally do is because I'm trying to save on bandwidth. I'm tired of uh, wasting a whole bunch of bandwidth every month. Underneath, we have two Vantec Nexstar TX enclosures, both of which have 500 gigabyte Caviar Blue drives in them. Two and a half inch laptop drives, of course. One of them stores all of my VHDs for my virtualization, the other one stores all of my ISO images. To the left, or to the right of that, we have a two terabyte Toshiba. Uh, Canvio 3 tera uh, 3 USB 3 drive, which is being used to uh, house a backup of that drive, just a system image. Um, and beside it, we have a one terabyte version of the same thing that I actually bought earlier, which is storing most of my backups. Some of the backups are stored on the 500 gigabyte my passport drive that you see to the right of that, and the 320 gig. My passport drive that is on the end there, which is the oldest drive that I have, I've had it for the longest, it's been the most reliable, is going to be soon moving over to the Dell over there and being used to store music. Right now there's nothing on it. This thing has also got a plethora of USB ports. As you can see, I have a 7-port USB hub here, which is not really utilized. I have a 7-port powered hub back there. In fact, they've got two 7-port powered hub backs Two, no, one seven port powered hub back there, and one is actually a 10 port powered hub. And I have another, uh, I've got a four port switchable hub right here, 
which right now the only thing that it's running is yeah, I've got my uh, weather radio plugged into it. So I've got a total of 27 USB ports on the system, which is a bit excessive, but whatever. Also hooked up to this, well hooked up to everything is my HP LaserJet laser printer. Great printer, by the way. They still sell it. If you can find one on sale, definitely pick one up. They're really great. Uh, it does make some noise, but whatever. Any printer that you buy today would make noise. And also plugged into this, I have, I'm sharing my internet connection over this, uh, this hub right here. I'm looking to replace this soon, but I have it going out to all of my other machines that either don't have wireless hardware or have malfunctioning wireless hardware. And of course, I've also got two fans because this room is not, there's not a lot of airflow in here, even with this big box fan. So I have that, which, by the way, yes, it's pink. Um, I thought it was red. In fact, on the box, it looks like it's red, uh, but it's pink. But there's no big, there's no problem with that. It's just a color, and it works just fine, even though it's made of completely of plastic. This one is actually made completely of metal, which I thought was interesting. It's rare that you see a completely metal fan these days. Uh, but that's what it's made out of, so there you go, I guess. Beside that, we have my Pentium D. This used to be my main computer back in 2006, and also 2007. Uh, it's got a TV capture card in it right now, a Rocket Raid 1740, and an ATI Radeon X1600 Pro, I believe is what that is. Power supply has obviously been replaced because that thing is far too big for the system. I also replaced the cooling fan. It's got a Pentium D820 clocked at 2.8 gigahertz, 2 gigabytes of memory, and hooked up to the RAID card is actually this 80 gigabyte uh, Maxter serial ATA drive as well as this 80 gigabyte Seagate serial ATA drive. I had a second Seagate serial ATA drive in here, but that drive failed and I still have to get it replaced. I wanted to do that today, but Today has just been crap in terms of weather, so I wasn't able to get out and do that. I will be doing it tomorrow, however, because I actually have to do other things tomorrow. So, unfortunately, because that was the boot drive, I can't really start the system up and really demonstrate it at all. So, I mean, I guess that's not happening, unfortunately. It also has a floppy drive in it, and I do need to replace the optical drive. Because the optical drive is sitting on the floor in pieces because it broke. Of course. One other thing that I forgot to mention, and wow, that really does not look all that colorful. It's a lot brighter yellow in real life, is the keyboard. This is what they call an Easy Eyes keyboard, which is ironic considering this thing probably causes bad eyesight. Um, and even if it doesn't, I mean, it's supposed to make your typing a little bit better because the keys have bigger printing on them. The thing that annoys me the most about it, though, is the fact that First of all, it's got one of these little itty bitty teeny tiny cords on it that is going to break the first time I bend it the wrong way. Um, and this tiny backspace key is really irritating as well. Not to mention, there's an insane amount of flex. This is a really cheap keyboard. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. I bought this for a dollar. Um, crappy switches, crappy keys, but the only reason why I use it is because it was cheap and because I don't really use this system often and I needed my good keyboard for that Acer netbook because I do use that for converting audio for use on my music system so there we go the mouse is actually a Logitech football mouse had that for a long time in fact that was the original mouse uh, well no not quite I had a soccer ball mouse before this one but that one got so worn out that it stopped working and we bought this as a replacement in 2007 um, I've had it since then, and it still works. So you can see it's also starting to get a little bit worn out right here. The paint's chipping off, but oh well. At least the optics still work in it, unlike the soccer bomb mouse, which was actually built quite a bit cheaper than this one. Uh, it was still a Logitech mouse, but I don't know. All right, I'm going to give a warning right now. This is a CRT monitor. There's going to be a lot of blinking in this part of the video because it's happened before, so skip this part if you have epilepsy or any other photosensitive conditions. 
because it is going to get a whole lot, uh, well, it's going to get really flashy up in here. This system is my iMac G3 350. I use it for transferring photos off of my digital camera, which is sitting over there, and is also plugged into it. Um, it has a, obviously, a 350 megahertz PowerPC G3. I think it's a 750FX processor. Maybe it's a 750CX. I have no idea. Uh, what else has this got? I think it's got 512 megabytes of memory installed in it. Maybe it's 256. I can't really remember. And a 20 gigabyte Maxter hard drive. That sounds like a cement mixer. And, of course, it's running Mac OS 922, latest version of the Mac OS. Or maybe it's Mac OS 904, I can't quite remember. Um, but, really nice keyboard. In fact, this is a Blueberry Macintosh keyboard. Matches this machine. But, unfortunately, I don't have the matching mouse. I'm just using this Apple Pro mouse. Let's get that out of the way for now. And power the system up. I love those speakers. They put out a lot of bass. I mean, they're not the best speakers in the world, but they're certainly a lot better than some of the junky speakers that you can find in computers today. Oh, it's not a board CD for this system. I should probably find the sleeve for that. Like I said, blinking patterns, ahoy. This camera won't focus on this CRT. I'm well aware of it. And it is about to get worse than that, as you can probably tell. Yeah, it's not that bad. Usually it's a lot worse. Come on, work. It's definitely still not the fastest thing, even with 512 megabytes of memory. I think it's got 512. It should have 512 in it. Maybe it's only got 256. But even at that, 256 should still be plenty for OS 9. I've always loved the charm of the classic Mac OS, but it does have some archaisms that I'm glad that we no longer have. In particular, this is not a multitasking operating system. Um, you can run multiple applications at once, but it was never designed to be multitasking. So as you can see, because one thing is hanged, um, it's probably a system process that's not that's uh, hung up. The entire system has hung up with it. So right, there we go. I wanted to take a look. How much memory is this thing going to install in it? 512 megabytes. Wow, you can't see that. Yeah, 512 megs. You really don't need to have virtual memory on if you've got 512 megs, but I've still got it on anyway. Mainly because old habits really do die hard. Next on my list is a Toshiba Portage 7020 CT. This is, of course, yet another junk find. It's got a Pentium 2 processor in it. I'm still not sure what speed it is, but I think it's a 366. Uh, it's got 192 megabytes of memory installed in it right now. A, I think it's either a 6 gig or a 1 gig hard drive. Um, and it's running Windows 98. And of course, it's also got the docking station. Unfortunately, the main system unit is suffering from the same problem that many Toshibas do, and that is the power plug is uh, breaking free from the motherboard. Or it's breaking the motherboard, I don't know. But the power plug that's in the docking station still works. Yes, this optical drive is a different color than the rest of the docking station. And yes, it bugs me. But I had to replace the optical drive. The original drive was a DVD-ROM. That didn't work. That drive works perfectly fine. Let's power this thing up. This thing is easy, easily the loudest system that I have, uh, except for the music PC over there. Takes a very long time to post with the docking station. It wouldn't take as long if I just had the system unit, but whatever. I can't really power it up with the system unit because the power plug doesn't work. Oh, it's going to try and boot off of the LAN. There we go. Starting Windows 98, and also starting the cooling fan, which as you can probably tell, sounds like a jet engine. Also takes a long time to start Windows. Even with 192 megabytes of memory. 
I'm on a computer, I don't have all day. I've only got nine minutes of recording time left on this SD card, so... Speakers should be at a normal listening level. Or, well, maybe not so much a normal listening level, but at a level that isn't going to blow me away. Now it's going to try and... Oh, there we go. As you can probably tell, it's a little bit on the loud side. Next up, we have the oldest PC of the bunch. This is my Toshiba Satellite Pro 420 CDT. Again, very similar to uh, a computer from my childhood. The fourth laptop I ever had, or was in the bunch of the fourth laptops, uh, I, I got into the Next up, we have a machine that is fairly similar to the fourth laptop that I ever got. Although I actually got a bunch of laptops at the same time, but anyway. This is a Toshiba Satellite Pro 420 CDT, the model under the 430 CDT that I had uh, way back in the early 2000s. Unfortunately, I don't have my 430 around anymore. That one died in a power surge. Uh, but this thing has got a Pentium 120 processor in it. I think it's got 40 megabytes of installed memory. It's got a 32 megabyte RAM card and 8 megabytes on the system board. This one definitely has a 1 gig hard drive in it, and it is running Windows 3.11 and DOS 622. It is set to boot uh, Windows automatically. I wish this camera would focus properly. Yep. 40 megabytes of memory. Thing takes forever to shut down, too. You can see booting into Windows for work groups. I don't have the display driver installed, but I guess it doesn't really matter because it still works just fine. It'll finally shut down. CD ROM drive in this particular system still ejects, but it doesn't actually function. I have to find a new CD ROM drive for it. Next up, we have got a system that is in pristine condition. And I even have all the documentation for it. This is an NEC Versa 6230. It is the middle of the road model of the 62. Next up is the machine that I've got in the greatest condition. I even have all the documentation for this particular system, including the restore CDs that were not ever opened until, of course, I got to it. I felt kind of bad opening them. But anyway, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the machine itself. This is an NEC Versa 6230. As it says, it's got a 1024 by 768 TFT color display. That was a big deal back then. Most displays were actually STN or they were grayscale. Some were even black and white, even back when this thing was made, uh, because it was just cheaper to do that. Most of them were STNs, though. That one's also a TFT, which is another rarity. Usually, a lot of Toshibas that I've seen actually have uh, STN displays, but anyway, let's not talk about that. This one has a Pentium 233. Um, it has, I don't even know how much memory I think it's got. I think it's got 128 megabytes of memory installed in it. I put a 10 gig hard drive in it, or what I think is a 10 gig drive. Maybe it's a 20 gig, I have no idea. But the BIOS doesn't support it, Windows 95 does. And obviously it's running Windows 95. It is running the original Windows 95 from the factory restore CD. It's got one of these neat little status LCDs. I love that. I like it a lot more than I like the uh, individual LEDs because in theory, this will never fail. As long as the solder joints don't break and as long as it doesn't, the driving circuitry doesn't get worn out, it will never fail. These LEDs will fail eventually. Let's power it up. It's even got a hardware brightness switch. You won't see that in a modern computer. 
Doesn't really do much, though. Anybody else remember when laptops used to make that beeping sound? Whenever they started up? They certainly don't do it anymore. I miss that. Heh, <laughs> virus scanner. As if that'll find it. In fact, I think it's McLaffey, too. Sounds great. I've got about three minutes of recording time left, so I'm going to cut that short. This is a similar machine to the 6230, but this one is easily in the sorriest of shape of anything that I've got. In fact, I really only grabbed it because uh, I wanted to use it for parts. This thing was picked literally off the side of the road on trash day. And it was in sorry condition. The power supply did come with it, but the power supply is ruined. This is an NEC versus 6030X. Again, 1024 by 768 TFT color, but the display is kind of worn out. And look at this. It is falling apart, and there's a chunk missing out of the side. It has a Pentium 133 processor in it. No MMX technology. This one does have MMX. Um, I think it's got 16 megabytes of memory in it. And uh, I don't even know what size hard drive it's got. And uh, it's running Windows 3.1 and DOS 6.22. Power switch is gone, so we have to use drastic measures in order to turn this on. Do not try this at home, folks. It is dangerous. Especially considering that you can slip. I can't do that with that hand. Thankfully, the switch still works. We'll see how worn out it is in a second. Still thinks there's a floppy drive installed, even though I've tried turning that off. I think this one actually has a Phoenix BIOS in it. Now let's see. 16 megabytes of memory. Hard drive is 1.4 gigabytes in size. It is definitely an IBM drive. I know that much. Windows 3.1, of course. This is a PowerBook G4. Uh, it's not actually mine. It belongs to uh, somebody else, a family friend. But I've had it since about 2007, and of course the latch doesn't want to open. Come on. Just a little bit finicky. This thing has a 1.5 GHz uh, PowerPC G4, of course, it's a PowerBook G4. 2 GB of memory, an 80 GB Seagate hard drive IDE, and it's running OS 10.5 Leopard which is the latest version of the uh, OS X software that can run on a G4. I turned the speakers off. I'd forgotten that I'd done that, actually. This thing takes forever to boot, though. But it does start up, as you can see. Hello there, everybody. This is a compact Presario A900. I'd gotten this one for free from a coworker of mine, a former coworker of mine. Um, they said that the motherboard had failed. Now, initially, I had thought the motherboard had failed, but um, when I took it home and I put memory in it, it actually worked perfectly fine. It has a, uh, I think it's a 1.86 gigahertz Intel Pentium dual core. T2390. Uh, it's got two, I think it's got four gigabytes of memory in it, in, installed in it right now. A 320 gigabyte Seagate, which is actually a factory replacement drive, and it is running Windows 8.1. Newest machine I have. I'll tell you what, folks, it has been a long day, and I've actually been swimming in the pool today, so if my hair looks like crap, that's why. Once again, this thing takes forever to post. And I don't have all day. There we go. Starting Windows. Yay!
I'm so glad to have my desk back. There you have it. This is my IBM ThinkPad T42P. Again, another trash find. It has a 1.8 GHz Pentium M. Um, is in brutal condition, as you can probably tell. At least the keyboard is. And the backlights are starting to fail on this 14-inch uh, 4x3 monitor. Um, it has, I think it's got 2 GB of memory installed in it. Maybe 1 gig. Um has an 80 gigabyte IDE hard drive, uh, Hitachi, and it is running Windows Embedded POS Ready 2009. Let's boot it up. As you can see, the backlight's pink, but it'll turn white as it warms up, so... I know it says Windows XP, but it's actually POS Ready 2009. This also used to be my main computer. This is a Lenovo ThinkPad T500. Uh, right now, it still has its 2.26 uh, GHz Intel Core 2 Duo P8400 processor. It's got 4 GB memory, a uh, 500 GB SSHD, um, and it's running Windows 7 Ultimate. I'm going to start this one up off of battery power, because why not? Also has a 1920 by 1200 display panel in it, which I replaced myself. It wasn't too terribly difficult to replace the display panel, uh, as long as you know what you're doing. I did manage to lose one of the uh, beauty plugs, however. Of course, it's not going to let me in. What a piece of joke. There we go. Lovely background there, right? I think so. And now, folks, we unfortunately get to the bunch of machines that don't work. This is my Macintosh PowerBook 180. It has a 33 MHz 68030 processor. It is maxed out at 14 megabytes of memory. And it is the oldest machine that I own out of everything. It was made in 1992. And it's also in pristine condition. There are no cracked standoffs. In fact, there's actually only one broken standoff in this entire machine, and it is one of the screws on the uh, one of the standoffs for the drive cage. So Usually those are the first ones to go. This thing is in absolutely pristine condition. Usually when you find them, they're all cracked to bits. They've got parts broken off. I mean, the screen hinges are usually destroyed. Lots of broken standoffs because the plastic shrinks. Excuse me, just because of what it is. It's a low quality. Well, I wouldn't call it low quality, but it's an ABS plastic and it shrinks over time. The battery, of course, in this particular unit's not installed because it has some shorted cells and causes other problems. Unfortunately, like I said, this machine does not work. I need to find a power supply for it, and I also need to find a new hard drive. Don't know when I'm going to restore this system to working condition, if I ever restore it to working condition, but I'll hang on to it for as long as I possibly can nonetheless. Here is one of my other power books, and as you can see, the screen is glossy enough that you can see me. Um, this is actually a PowerBook 520C, which makes it a color model, unlike my other one, which uh, 
is on the grayscale. However, the other display has it all over this one because this is only an STN display or Super Twisted Pneumatic. And the SDN display is actually it's a DSTN, it's a dual super twisted pneumatic. Or dual scan twisted pneumatic. I'm not quite sure what it stands for, but DSTN. So which means that it's a dual scan display, it's got two processors, and there are two halves of the display. You can actually see a dividing line across it when it's running. The STN displays are are like utter crap by comparison. Let's not kid ourselves. They're cheap, but they suck. This one is not nearly as pristine condition, and as you can see, it also needs a hard drive. Um, it's missing the screws for the keyboard, and there are screws missing out of the side. There's all kinds of other issues with it. Um, but, it would work if it had a hard drive installed, so I guess there's that, right? has a 25 megahertz 68L CO40 chip and it's only got 12 megabytes of memory. Again, I hope to restore this machine to functional condition someday. This is the last of the laptops. This is a Toshiba Tekra 8100. I'll show you that in a second, so you can see there. Again, I mean, it's not in perfect shape. There's some scratches here, um, and there's some definite scratching on uh, the back panel here, including what looks like a swastika, which is not not cool, but anyway. Yes, even adults are immature sometimes, but anyways, let's not talk about that. I don't really know what this thing has in it for specs. It's got... I actually put my DVD-ROM drive in here. I don't know why I did that, uh, but this drive does not work. I have to put the CD-ROM back in. Uh, I don't think it's got any memory in it. I took the memory out. Um, does, definitely doesn't have a hard drive in it. I do have the caddy and all the screws, though. And it's got a Pentium 3 processor. No clue what speed it is. It's probably a 750, might be an 866, but it's definitely no faster than 866. And, um, it's actually got a motherboard problem. The typical Toshiba issue with, um, the power port on the back here breaking free of the plastic. And in fact, there's a screw missing in the chassis, which probably helped to hasten its demise, which is really unfortunate. I'm probably going to perform an autopsy on this fairly soon. I mean, other than that, this thing is not in that bad of shape, and I, again, I would love to get this working. Chronologically, it is probably closely related to the 720CT, and I know that it is the successor to the 8000. Um, but this, this and the 7020CT share a similar case design, so I'd have to think that they were released around the same, around the same time. When this thing was running, it was running Windows Embedded POS Ready. In fact, actually, no, it was running Windows XP, and then I tried putting POS Ready 2009, which is when the power thing here broke. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix it because boards seem to be made of rarium and uh, priced similarly. So, I'm going to see what I do with this one. I mean, it's not really worth much. I don't, I'm really only half-heartedly looking to fix it, but I hope maybe that I can fix this one as well. I'd love to fix this one. And the last machine of the bunch, an iMac G3600. Functionally, it is in the worst condition of every machine that I've got. Um, although I guess I should give it brownie points. At least it doesn't have a motherboard problem. Um, Although, actually, you know what? It did have a motherboard problem. That machine was originally an iMac G3350, but before I got it, uh, its original owner replaced the motherboard with one from a G3600. The reason why I know that it's not original is, first of all, I have the original 350MHz board, but I definitely know that they didn't sell iMac G3600s in this Indigo case. This thing is in an Indigo case, of course. Functionally, functionality-wise, it would still it would run if I were to put a hard drive in it and install the operating system again, and I might just do that for the heck of doing it. But the CRT picture tube is totally shot. The focus is gone, and uh, the brightness and contrast are pretty low on it. I mean, they're nowhere near what it used to be. And I'm actually it's starting to get to the point where I can see some scan lines in it, and like unhealthy scan lines. So 
I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to really put the money in to restore it. And put the time mostly to restore it. I'm not putting a new picture tube in it because it's just not worth it. Um, these things really aren't worth anything. They're not worth shipping, so I really don't know if I'm going to sell it. They will be worth something eventually, someday, so I might hang on to it until they are worth something, but people just aren't interested in them, and they certainly wouldn't be interested in a machine that is definitely not collector grade. As you can see, there's some cracks in the acrylic, in the acrylic housing. In fact, that's a really sad story because when I went to go take it apart to clean it out, the acrylic basically just disintegrated in my hands. It was really a sad sight to see. Uh, but it would run fine if I were to put another hard drive in it. I just don't know if I'm really going to waste my time because even this Versa 6030X, which is all cracked up and um, all of that, it still runs perfectly. No problems at all. That one, functionally wise, it needs a lot of work. So I don't know if I'm really going to waste my time. Anyway, sorry for ending this video on a sad note, but there you go, there's a look at all of my computers, and I've powered on everything I possibly can. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below and I will get back to you. Thank you for watching, and uh, this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then.